Hello again everyone, Chris here with the Comic Font, and I want to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart, especially with someone who deals with comics like I do, that is the pull list. A pull list works similar to a subscription. Instead of contacting the publisher directly, you ask the comic book store for specific titles you want to read or collect. They will then order those books specifically for you in addition to the comics they order for the month. Every Wednesday on New Comic Book Day, you come pick up the comics that came out that week. Not only is it a great way to guarantee you'll get the comics you want, but it's also a great way to support your local comic book store. Once the order is placed, it'll take about a couple of months for your comics to come in, so be patient. Set, set up an alarm on your cell phone, write it down on the calendar, make a special reminder to let you know when your comic should arrive. And feel free to call the shop to ask if your comics are in. That, believe it or not, that's actually encouraged. Just always keep in contact with them. That's always cool. And thanks to the internet, some major comic book stores can set up a pull list for you online. The method used most often is you select the comic series you want to get, click the subscribe or pull list option, of whichever they use, and finalize the deal by entering your credit card information so they can bill you immediately when your weekly pull list is ready. And they mail it to you directly. So there are a lot of options out there for you to get your comics. That being said, there are some guidelines about the pull list that some people seem to forget about. And today I'm going to go over some of the major ones so you can get your comics efficiently and enjoy them to the fullest. Like I said earlier, coming in on Wednesday or later in the week to pick up your comics is the ideal time. Of course, some things will hinder that, like when you get paid, transportation issues, stuff like that. As long as your comic book store knows and understands that you'll pick them up at a designated time of the month, they can work with you so you can get, so you can get your comics. Now, if you aren't able to pick up your pull list for an extended period of time, contact your comic book shop as soon as you can and explain what's going on. Please keep this in mind. It's your responsibility to pick up your comics and your responsibility to let them know if you can't. Remember, the comic shop owners have a business to run. Keeping tabs on all the deliveries, customers, ongoing Magic the Gathering tournaments, all that stuff. It is your list. It is up to you to check if your comics are in or not. And don't worry about asking the clerks about it. They are there to help you. As long as you're civil and respectful, you should be good as gold. Like I said earlier, if you're unable to get your comics, contact the shop as soon as you can. Don't dawdle, don't wait, don't think you got all the time in the world. Your pull list is what they order on top of their regular order. The more you wait, the bigger your pull gets, and the more money it costs the store owners and ultimately you. You see, they buy the comics from the publishers direct and sell the comics to the customers. It's a different model from the newsstand where they send the, all the unbought comics back to the publisher. So when you set up a pull list, you're basically setting up a contract with your comic book shop. They will order the comics for you, on the promise that you will purchase the comics when they come in. The shop gets the money, you get your comics, contract fulfilled, capitalism at its finest. Now, if you don't pick up your comics, that's extra money the shop owner has to get back so he can turn a profit. And there's no guarantee that those comics will sell. They may sit there in the rack for a long time and that can lead to a loss. And if those losses accrue, there's a chance the comic shop may go under. So yeah, the pull list is your responsibility. The comic shop can work with you if you want certain titles, variant covers, stuff like that. Don't ever assume that the shop will contact you if a title is coming out remotely close to what you order to see if you're interested in it. It's up to you to keep track of what you order and what you might want in the future. Some shops are pretty good at predicting what you may want, and they might slip a copy of a comic they think you might be interested in. If you are, feel free to add that to the list. Yes, you can add and subtract from your pull list, whatever you like. If you don't want another title, or if you're like not interested in a title you're getting currently, just let them know and they'll take it off the list for you so you don't have to worry about it in the future. And if a shop does predict accurately what you might like, keep supporting them. That kind of customer service you definitely want to hang on to. Now, it's easy to go crazy on the pull list, ordering a lot of comics that want you to, I want that one, I want that one, I want that one, I want that one. But only if you're able to pay for them. Remember, the price of an average comic book is around $4. If you have 10 comics a month on your list, that's about 40 bucks right there. That's affordable. If you go crazy and get 20 comics a month, you know, some stuff you think you might just gotta have, 20 comics translates to about $80. And if you don't pick them up, that's 80 bucks a month you'll have to spend at once. Now, in this example, at the end of four months, that'll be $320. And that's money the comic shop has to figure out how to make back if you don't pick them up. Some places will give a crazy call after a few months to see if you still want those comics. 
Now, you got two choices here when this happens. You got A, pay for all those comics, or B, cancel your pull list altogether. And in my opinion, and no matter which one you choose, this behavior can hurt the relationship between you and the comic shop. If you show that you are unreliable on picking up your comics and contacting the store if you can't, that could show that you are not interested in holding up your end of that contract I mentioned earlier. And that could lead to the shop not wanting your business, which will benefit nobody. So please, for the love of Jack Kirby, do not let your eyes get bigger than your wallet. So, if you're just starting out doing a pull list, my advice, do one or two titles a month and see if you like it. If you do, you're free to add a couple more on the list if you want to. Now, please realize if your budget is tight, keep your selections to only the titles you really want to collect. This will help build a great relationship between you and the comic shop. And it's a great way to keep the local comic shop alive by honoring the trust of the pull list. So if you do want a pull list, check with your local comic book store and see what it takes to set one up. Now, to summarize how to set up the pull list, at least in my opinion, here's what you do. Let the shop know which titles you want. Pick up your comics on time. Contact your shop as soon as possible if you're unable to pick up your comics and set the pull list with a budget in mind. And once you got that set up, your comic books start coming in, and there you go. Your subscriptions are set up through the pull list, and everything starts accruing, and you're getting your favorite comics there, and it's just one of the best things out there. And like I said, it really helps you connect with your comic book store. It helps keep them alive. And remember, guys, uh, if you're in the Oxford, Alabama area, come by Second and Charles, where I work. I, I, I can help you set up a comic pull list myself and see what you like to do. Once again, this is Chris with the Comic Font, and I hope to see you around every Wednesday on New Comic Book Day. Y'all take care.